Welcome to the AVID booth at NAB 2012. I'm Pam Gill, and I'm here with Mary Driscoll, our Graphics application Specialist. One of the highlights of the show here at AVID is our introduction of the next generation graphics platform, AVID Motion Graphics. Our customers have told us what's important to them. They need to be able to create stunning imagery to stay ahead of the competition and keep viewers tuned in. They need to get to air faster, and they also need an application that's easy to use. Our Deco customers also need a migration path to the next generation platform. Avid Motion Graphics addresses all of these needs. It lets graphics designers light up screens with exhilarating imagery. It lets journalists and producers incorporate stunning graphics into their stories, leveraging agile integrations with newsroom and automation workflows. And it lets business owners and managers streamline their workflows to save time and money and to build strong brand identities. So today we're going to take a look at some of the advanced creative tools of Avid Motion Graphics. We're going to explore the graphics playout control, news workflow integration, the context sensitive user experience, data driven graphics, and Deco family support. The Avid Motion Graphics family consists of three main products. First we have Avid Motion Graphics. It's used to create high production value graphics in real time 2D and 3D rendering. It has a full feature set for advanced graphics playout and design. Next, we have Avid Motion Graphics Production. It also features a real-time 2D and 3D rendering engine. It's used for high volume graphics production and newsroom. It has a streamlined feature set. To supplement Avid Motion Graphics and Avid Motion Graphics Production, we also have Avid Motion Graphics Creation. It's our software-only graphics creation application, and it runs on a laptop or desktop. We also have options for exporting 3D Studio Max files and Photoshop files to import them and use them within Avid Motion Graphics and a mapping application. So Mary, how do we get started working in AMG? Well, you can get started in AMG by opening it up and having a look at the user interface. What the decision was to do is try and make a user interface that of course is going to have all these advanced 3D tools because we've got the 3D rendering but expose those tools only as the user needs them because we want to bring in all of our operators, even those who are coming from a simple 2D environment mm -hmm. and make it simple enough to do all the basics, but expose the deeper tools as you need them. Right. What we have here, if you look over at the interface, is starting up here on the left, what we have is a project-based workflow. So in my project, I have a number of compositions and you can see a lot of them listed here. Currently, I'm just playing that nice sports logo. It's just got a pretty sports graphic open for us. Mm -hmm. Down below that is my library of different types of objects that I can use. You can see I have some curves in here. I've got all of my basic primitives. There's some particle wipes. But the good thing, remember, collapse what you don't need, open what you do. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to look at these in more detail. And this is one of the great things that I like. Anywhere you see a list of objects, See that where I move the mouse and it has that little icon to move? Yeah. All I have to do is click and drag, and you can see those in a larger format. Oh, very nice. That'll be true throughout the interface where you see that. Okay. If you have a list of textures, and they're really little, uh -huh. you want to see the more detail of that JPEG or Targa file, mm -hmm. you'll just click and drag, and you'll see more of that. And of course, simply collapse that when you're done. Down here in the very bottom left, you'll see this In Use tab. What we're looking at there is, what have I already got here on the screen? The benefit of that being, what if I did want to add another logo or another bit of text? I can reutilize any of the text effects, any of the materials, any of the textures that I've already used in this graphic quickly and easily, rather than have to figure it out again. And that's pretty standard with every graphic application, but we've made it really easy, really exposed simply to the operator. Below that here in the bottom is a timeline. When we get to timelines, Pam, it's so easy. You find an attribute you want, you click it, you hold it, you drag it, you drop it. You have that keyframe for that attribute instantly. It's wow. so simple. Just above that over here on the right, this is my list of objects rather than my list of the compositions. So in this composition, way over on the left, I am using these objects. Looks like a short list right now, but let me open one of these lists for you. Remember that you can have really great effects like a clone, where I actually have all of that helix, which is that moving diagonal in the background, mm -hmm. is actually one object, which we've expanded by cloning it 50 times. 
we put it into a group way on the top there, and that's what I expanded a minute ago. And then we took a group effect and we displaced those items. We added what we call a timer, which is rather than a timeline, just a go command to say, can you just give me this continuous movement through this? And that's so simple because normally you'd have to go back to your graphics department and have them create this and After Effects and render it. This was done, it's a JPEG file on one bar, replicated, expanded, and then moving. The other thing you might notice is when I did click over here into my objects, the editing capability for each object will change and will follow you. As you click on an object, you're going to get a different amount and a different types of things that you can edit. So it's going to follow you, the user. You don't have to think, wait a minute, with the text, I need to do X, Y, or Z. Those are going to open for you instantly and immediately. Seems like it keeps the interface pretty clean that way. Uh, yes, very much so. If you exposed everything on here, you just have so much you couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. The other thing to keep in mind is the operator will be able to design the interface as they want. If they wanted to take a tab and move it somewhere else, they'd be able to do that. For myself, I'm just going to leave it right here on the default so that we keep it consistent through this project. So it lets you work the way you want to. <laughs> yes, very easy to work the way I need to for the production that I'm creating that day. Mm -hmm. Down along the bottom, we'll be able to talk about data, binding data, such as Excel, RSS, o any ODBC compliant database, and XML data directly to any part of the graphic, and not just to text, but to an attribute like the size of a bar graph, or even the rotation if you have viewer comments and you're going to give it a a wheel of how far they're going to go, you could link it to the rotation value. So data driving not just words and numbers, but data driving any of the attributes, the numeric attributes in the application. You do actually have a viewport as well. There's a camera, which you can switch cameras, and then you can do actual camera moves on the canvas. Really simple and something you'll be able to use and develop very quickly when you become an operator. Up here on the top right are just a couple more things. It's your materials the materials that you're using in this, textures, because of you may be referencing back, of course, to that JPEG or bitmap, or of course, a media file, an MOV, an AVI file, and you also can have individual video input or audio inputs. Each box will come with video, I, video IO mm -hmm. for both input and output. And lastly, your fonts, because hey, which font style did you want? I'll be able to select and show you which ones you want and modify those right here. So can we take a look at some of the text effects? Sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over to a stocks graphic. Now, of course, it's got more than just stock, stock information going on. We've got all that great background elements. But what we want to look at is the fact that we've got it right here on the screen in front of us with just a couple of simple text elements. Mm -hmm. What if you had this stock update and you said to me, Mayor, why don't we have today's date in there? Mm -hmm. Well, let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the composition over here in my composition tree, and that's going to expose for me over on the right all of the many objects that I'm using. And of course, the one I'm using, which we've named as title text. Not only can I select it by its name, but you see it actually highlighted over here in the list. Mm -hmm. Very simple. What I want to have is the same type of text in a different layer. I'm going to duplicate it. Not too complicated. I'm going to hold Control. I'm going to hit the letter D for duplicate. And you can see it very quickly and easily brought that second version of that. I'm going to take the moment to name it an excellent idea when you're building so that I'll know later that that should be the date. And what I need to do is I just need to move it down. So that was really great. I just type, move it down. And then what do I want to do? I want to make it say today. Here we are at NAB 2012 on the final day. If I wanted to type right on the UI, could I do that as well on the graphic? Absolutely. If I wanted to make it, let's pretend it's next month. Oh, wait, it's really only April, Pam. I'm <laughs> going to go back to April. So there's, there's lots of different options. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very simple to type right onto the UI or into the field. Mm -hmm. One more thing just while I'm here. In these fields, if I wish to, I can say that I want to expose one of those fields to the journalist with mm -hmm. Avid Motion Graphic Journalist, of course, our great plugin to iNews and EMPS. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I just need to expose it to the user. You're going to have an actual AMG control interface because what we're looking at here, although it's playing out for me, is not the on-air interface. You're going to have a simple list control 
with AMG control. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to expose one of those, and I've actually already done this with, for example, the numbers here on the Dow Jones, what I did is I simply took that data, here it is, and remember, there's my field, I typed it, clicked it, held it, dragged it, and dropped it into the form, and voila. Every journalist who has this template available and every live operator has this is going to be able to access that particular field and update that data. Wow, that's really slick. Now what if I wanted to actually create some more interesting looking fonts and font effects? How would I do that? Well, let me just go over to one of our simple samples here, simply called text effects. When text is added, it comes up as just a very flat, 2D, white, aerial text. But it's quite easy to modify that. If I come over here to my library of effects and I click on the font, which conveniently, not just tooltip, but with the letter A, so it's obvious, I can open up these different types of fonts, a number of 3D extrusions and outlines, and then basic 2D font text. What I did here is I actually made this into a 3D text, and to do that, I had clicked it, I had dragged it, I had dropped it. Now, since it's already there, I'm not going to do it again, but if you move over here into our text menu, you'll see it's already got a 3D font on it. What if what we wanted to do is to rotate that text a little so I can show you the extrusion a bit better, and then increase the amount of bevel on it. Let me come over here to my bevel, and I'm just going to drag it. Do you see it automatically happening right there? I sure do. So it's really quick and easy to either drag, click and drag to change that, or in my case, I know I want it three, so I'm just going to double click in that field, hit the number three, and now it's right back to its original bevel. And of course, you can save all these presets for later use. Absolutely. So there's my 3D font. All I do, click, hold, drag, and drop. I pop that into the library. I've already got a few, so I'm not going to add this one at this time. Okay. But plenty of them, and you can keep adding to those as you need them. Okay. So you've got your font, you've got your style. Now what if you want to animate that? Every single bit of text you add comes with this feature, text effects. How did you want that to move, Pam? Is that good? Uh, did you want it to maybe stretch a little as it moved and maybe have a little rotation? All I do is change those and watch when I play it out and watch when I play it in. Very nice. Very fast and simple. So you mentioned earlier that other users would have the um, ability to change the data within a graphic. How would they do that once it's created in the design UI? Well, what we do is we'd go over to the control interface. It comes with every single Avid Motion graphics unit, whether it's the AMG, AMG Production, or even AMG Creation for offline creation of what you're going to play on the air. I'm going to open an existing project that I already had, but I'll be able to show you how easy it was to create it as well as to modify it. When I open it up, I have two sections here. You'd want to do that. You'd separate out, say, um, between uh, before your first break or pertinent to subject, which is what I've done here with news and sport. If I wanted to play this graphic, I would, let's say, hit spacebar. That's how easy it is. Wow. Let's go down to that stocks graphic. I'm going to arrow down to it. Going to hit the spacebar. What if I had something I wanted to edit? Well, I'm going to come down to that third one, and it's really just a lower third, and it says default text. That's obviously not what we want. I'm going to play that back off. Let me edit that for you. Hit the letter E, E as in edit. You just type something right into there. And spacebar to play. There we go. What Sec if I wanted to add you on there? Uh, that's all right. You just <laughs> bring that one off, and I'm going to hit D for duplicate. And there we go. Very nice. So you're able to not just add from this list or duplicate from this list or obviously delete anything you don't want in this list. If I wanted, see my election graphic down on the bottom? Mm -hmm. I'd like that to actually be item number three. I'm going to hit page up twice. I could also click drag and drop. I could find another graphic from down below that I wanted. I could drag and drop it right in there. I can add to that list and move it. You can see how simple it is. Very slick. 
One other quick feature I want to show you there, Pam, many of these graphics, the full screens, for instance, would always be on the air all on their own. But if I bring your lower third back in, you know, I've got this great news bug and I'd like to add it. I'm going to hit F1. If you look in the top left, the F1 a label on that box turning red. Yep. When it's red, it means if I play something, you should go off. But when it's gray, it says, stay on the screen. And if I play something else, add it to that. So now I have two objects on the screen. I can add that bug. I could add a live. I could add a ticker. And then anytime I need to take them off, and let's say I need to take them off and move back to my elections graphic, I simply highlight them in red. They'd play off in the next one on. The idea is to make it really, really fast and simple to get there. So Mary, I noticed when you brought that second graphic onto the lower third that it moved over the first one. Is that built-in logic to the system? Yes, that's something you're able to build in yourself when you do the template creation. So the let's say it's news, the news director and the art director would work in tandem and they'd say, well, the possibilities of what could happen in the show are you could have this on and you may need to add this, this, and this, or take that off. They'll create in the logic here in the presenter mode with the grouping of these different compositions, the knowledge that if this happens, then that should happen. And so that's something that you'll be able to do in the creation process so that when you're on air, the people telling the story and doing the actual newscast or sportscast won't have to worry, will this work? Will this not work? They can add the content they need pertinent to the news that they need to tell rather than having to worry about the graphics working correctly on the air. And probably avoiding collisions as well. Hugely. Well, that's great for manually entering data into graphics, but what if it was linked to a data source and it automatically updated? How does that work? Well, what I have here for you to show that is a primary graphic of different counties. And rather than taking and adding data that is just going to drive the, the numeric or the um, alpha information on name or text data. What we decided is, let's show you that data can drive any object on here. So here are the types of data that we can use. I'm going to be using an Excel database here, but you see we have the ability to link to RSS and XML, any ODBC compliant database. But what we've done here in this particular graphic for the elections is rather than take and make the letters or the words be driven by data, we've taken and linked data to the map, to the depth of the map. Yes, I can see how that there are different depths. Well, let me show you that. I'm going to deal with Mitchell County right here in the middle. And if I move down to my data sources down here in the bottom, I happen to already know that number seven is going to drive the depth of that particular county. I'm going to make that size very large. I'm going to make it six. Did you see how Mitchell County came out for me? Sure did. To bring it back to a more normal. The idea here is in my particular case, it's just popping to that, but I could build a timeline and have it animate to that effect very quickly and very easily. So data, you need to think of data not just giving me the numbers for the election results or the scoreboard, but data driving any of the attributes of the graphic right here. Very cool. You see the flag? Doesn't that look like a nice animation? Someone built that and exported that to me after a render. Mm -hmm. That flag, if we look here at the texture for that flag, is a bitmap. So it's a static bitmap. How mm -hmm. long did that take the graphic artist to build? Not very. All we did is we took that flag and we linked this offset to a timer with, again, as always, simple drag and drop technology. What I'm going to do for you to show you that this is really playing in full time, it's taking 13 seconds to happen, and what's happening is it's set to swing, so it's playing back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to change it, make it really fast there. See how it's moving much faster? Yeah. Okay, I'll change it back to what we had at 13. If someone had created that in an After Effects project, and then the producer had come in and said, that's too fast, they'd have to take the project back, do that full re-render, bring it back in. We're able to do those things on the fly, in real time, right here on Avid Motion Graphics. Wow, that's amazing. What a time saver. Earlier you were showing us the list of primitives. What if I wanted to design a new look and use primitives and apply a texture to them? Can you show us how that's done? 
Sure. Once again, I'm going to start with one of our basic ones. And there's a cube here. Looks empty, but there's actually inside of that a media file. Wow. What this is, is it's a moving MOV file, and it's actually mapped on all four sides, or six sides, because it's a cube, of that cube, OK? You could map into that live video, or in this case, an MOV file. Would you like to see something different in there, Pam? You bet. Let me navigate over here to my clips. How about we put this little bit of an ocean kind of a look, blue. Eh, that's a little mellow for me. Let's instead put on another one of these clips. You can see how easy it is. These are really just different video lighting effects on these clips. So you can map clips to any object in the UI. Absolutely. Let's add another object just because why not? Move back to our primitives. Come down to a sphere. If I want to put it on the screen here, I'm going to hold shift and drag and drop. So shift, drag, drop just brought that sphere right in. What would you like to see a different bit of video, moving video on that? Yes, I would. Gosh, I think we have the Ferrari. And there's video footage from close ups on some Ferrari footage right there mapped into that sphere. Very Rem cool. Remember, that can still be moved and animated and slid around and rotated. And the other thing that's cool, if I do move that right there, can you see that that's truly 3D? It's in front of, behind, or inside wow. of that cube. Very cool. So Mary, what if, what if you want to work in stereoscopic 3D? How do you do that? Well, we do have an option for stereoscopic 3D. And you'll see here, if I open up my preferences, I'm able to set the program stereo to whatever type of 3D I want to work in, whichever eye. I'm going to set mine to side by side and then give myself a certain amount of parallax. And you see, when I close that, you're going to see this side by side over here. You're really not going to see that since we're shooting in 2D, Pam. So you're going to have to get the glasses and put them on later, and I'll show it to you. So Mary, as we were designing this new product line, we obviously were considering the needs of our Deco customers. So how can Deco customers use their files within Avid Motion Graphics? Well, we actually have three different paths for our Deco customers. First of all, they can simply run the Deco software on this new hardware. That actually was released late last year. The cool thing about that is the operator would come in in the morning and launch it, and they wouldn't even know it was new. It's going to look like Deco and work like Deco, and that's going to let them continue working on their production as they go. Once Avid Motion Graphics is released, there's an automatic upgrade path where they're going to get the Avid Motion Graphics software. Now, the first time, even though you and I are seeing that this is a pretty use, simple user interface and they'll be able to adapt quickly, they may need to stay on the air that very day. So let's give them the option of using their Deco assets exactly as they are now here in the AMG environment. I'm able to do that right here by moving back to my library where I had my curves and my spheres and my different objects. And I can take and select Deco and add a Deco player object. I'm going to come now over to my editor, my object editor area, and you'll see there's a Deco player tab. I'm going to open that up. What I want to do is I want to take and add a file. I'm going to move down here into my files. Let's open one of my templates. I have a nice full screen here, so I'm going to open that. See right below here, I have this Q button. Mm -hmm. When I click on that, it's actually going to look ahead and find all of that deco template, including its motions and all of its layers. And when I take it, there it is. Very nice. Now, the really cool part is if I click on configure, I can open and show you that there's actually a deco running right under this graphic. Mm -hmm. This is the Deco graphic here. I could actually modify the graphic here and then play it again over there in the AMG environment. But the other thing you may notice is that this is kind of dark and the other's bright. That's not an actually a problem in the interface. What it is is I have a lot of global light sources for the rest of my demo. So those lights are shining in it. I could very quickly modify those. But since I'm going to play the full demo again very shortly for the NAB customers, I'm going to leave all those light sources. The cool thing is that actually mapped it right onto a surface here in AMG. That's actually an object now in AMG. So I could manipulate that further if I wish to right here. Very nice. So it seems like this is going to give 
Deco customers the ability to transition at their own pace to Avid Motion Graphics. Very quickly and very easily. Thanks, Mary. Sure, Pam. So there you have a brief overview of what Avid Motion Graphics can do. It can help you create stunning 2D and 3D imagery, get you to air quickly, it's easy to use, and we have a clear migration path for Deco customers. Thank you for watching.